question number 72 another one when circular plasmids having a centromere sequence are transformed into yeast cells they replicate and segregate in each cell division however if a linear chromosome is generated by cutting the plasmid at a single site with a restriction endonucleus the plasmid are quickly lost from the yeast it is known that genes on the plasmid are lost because of the instability of the chromosome ends what could be done so as to restore its stability and can be inherited so again uh, for group c questions read it twice thrice until and unless you understand now in this case i understand by reading it once the scenario here is uh, the circular plasmid if we talk about uh, it may have centromere in a particular point now now the thing is uh, in yeast cells, uh, these circular plasmids work completely fine. Let's say this is a yeast cell and there is a circular plasmid. Now, the thing is, if, if we break this circular plasmid in a single location, let's say in this location, that plasmid becomes linear with a centromere in the middle. All right. But the thing is, uh, those plasmids are degraded. Those plasmids are degraded. Right. Uh, so, it is known that the genes on plasmid are lost because of the instability of the chromosome ends. So first things first, what is a chromosome end? Chromosome end is known as telomere, right? Telomere is a region, a structure where it contains a repetitive segment, repetitive unit of nucleotides to prevent uh, the chromosome from degrading from the end by exonuclease enzymes, right? So what we can do to fix this? In this case, if we add a telomere sequences at the end of chromosome in both the case, which is common in eukaryotic cells, uh, that means if you put repetitive nucleotide sequences at the end, even if the exonucleus try, it will not cleave the actual structural genes or functional genes outside, right? So what we can do? Say one thing is the methylation of adenine residues of the plasmid. Now methylation plays a role for not degrading it by restriction endonuclease enzymes but in this case we are talking about the endon endonuclease enzymes but it do it will not protect the end of chromosomes so it is not true second is the complexing the plasmid ends with histone proteins now it is a, it is a tedious task to do because if we complex with histone proteins still uh, they can achieve the degradation of the chromosomes because at the end if the histone proteins are histone proteins can be removed by the cell due to the addition of histone acetyl transferase enzyme or addition of acetylation to the histone tail it can also uh, be removed and that end will be uh, available for the degradation so this is not also true third is by incorporating telomere sequence to the end of plasmid yes this find we find this very applicable because if we add telomere sequences at the end uh, it can cover a single unit and it will prevent the action of exonuclease enzymes to break it down from the end fourth is by incorporating acetylated histone proteins to the plasmid end acetylated histone proteins will never ever will in, in direct contact uh, with the dna because uh, with the chromosome it, this is not at all true so because because when you acetylate histone it actually released uh, from the dna so obviously uh, this option three is the correct one so we will choose to add telomere sequences at the end and uh, usually this thing is true because you know in case of uh, certain plasmids uh, like you know yeast artificial chromosome this kind of plasmids yeast artificial chromosomes we'll see uh, the addition of telomeres at the end to prevent the loss right so this is uh, option three is the correct answer